Thanks, everybody. And uh, we're now in open session. Um, welcome to anybody that's here on the uh, on the webinar. Um, I just want to let you know that I know we were going with our council meetings uh, semi live, I guess mostly live, but uh, due to the up tick and some of the concerns that both from the province and from our public health uh, unit uh, we decided to fold, fold back for now and we'll we'll keep it on a regular basis maybe it, like by the end of the month we'll relook at it again see where we're going as far as the uh, uptick that seems to be happening in the fall so bear with us and we're kind of working through this would be I think Annalene one of our first meetings we've had to try to with the public meetings and stuff so There'll be some learning curve there as we go, but some of the other uh, uh, councils have been doing this right from day one. They didn't go back to uh, to a live situation, so we're, we learn from their lessons, hopefully, and we'll try to work through the two uh, public meetings we have today. So uh, thanks everybody for tuning in, and uh, this is going to be on uh, Matt. I believe we have this on uh, on tape, and it goes out as well, right? So or Annalie, I guess I could say Matt's. Yeah, good. that's correct. Okay. Yeah, so. Moved by Councillor Dirksen, second by Councillor Gunson, that the minutes of the September 1st, 2020 closed session and the September 15th, 2020 regular town middle council meeting be approved. All in favor? Good. Thank you. Opposed? Not seeing. Oh, and just, just one uh, comment. Uh, Jean can't be with us today. She had uh, a work commitment. Uh, and I must say, uh, she's been on the front lines for this thing. So. I think she's listening on maybe if she can, but uh, she can't be here uh, all the whole day for the participation part. So uh, thanks, Jean, for your work on the, on the front lines. All righty. Additional items is disclosed at other business. David, Deputy Mayor, Mark, Judy, anybody else? If you have something, let me know later. No delegations today. Uh, correspondence received for information requiring direction of council. Um, anybody want to pull anything out of the minutes? Out of the uh, correspondence, sorry. Not seeing anybody, okay. Moved by Councilor McKenzie, second by Deputy Mayor Turton. The Council of Town of Middle receives the correspondence for information. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, good. Reports of committees and town staff matters, table motions for which notice has been received. Um, a cultural roundtable minutes. Okay. Good, after Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Um, just quick highlights out of the cultural roundtable minutes is we are in culture days as we speak. Usually it's the last weekend in September, but um, with COVID they have decided to uh, extend it over the month. So, um, Gord Duff has been leading our cultural roundtable team for culture days and they've put together a great schedule. However, COVID keeps wrecking havoc with many of our events and plans. Uh, sadly, many of our events have had to be canceled um, or numbers dwindled uh, substantially. So that's unfortunate. They had put together a great schedule and encourage everyone to check out the culture days website for the events that are still proceeding. Um, also want to thank our summer student, Erin Raftis. She's worked uh, hard this summer putting together um, the transfer of our Treasures of Minto website over to our main website. That should be completed on Awesome's end by the end of the month. So you should be able to show that at the next meeting. And also is working right now assisting our volunteer groups putting their volunteer positions on our volunteer portal, which will also move over to the main town website. If anyone's members of those groups, I encourage you to reach out while we have that assistance available until the end of the month. And lastly, um, just about our budget prep for 2021. We don't plan on putting in any new public art projects this year, um, but maintaining the existing pieces. So some of our cones need to be touched up. Uh, we've had a bit of vandalism on a couple of pieces that need to be repaired. And our sculpture piece in Clifford will need to be um, retouched up as well. So no new public art projects in 2021, just maintaining the others. And if there's any questions. Questions for Belinda. Uh, nope. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you, Linda and Belinda, and thanks the uh, the committee next time you see them because uh, I was on the last call. It's really frustrating when you put so much time and effort into it and you can't do all the stuff we wanted to do. So yeah, anyways, we'll do better next year when we are out of this uh, virus situation, I hope. Okay, uh, moved by Councilor McKenzie, except second, wait a minute, sorry, here we are. Moved by Councilor Elliott, second by Councilor Gunson, that the Council of Town Middle receives the cultural roundtable minutes of September 28th, 2020 and approves any recommendations uh, contained here therein. All in favor? Opposed? Hearing none. Thank you. Passed. Next up, we have Linda. And Linda, is this your last official act or you still got a couple more weeks? Well, th no, this is, well, I have a couple more weeks of holidays, but this is my last official, official meeting yes well i must say um we unfortunately we've had lots of time to uh, interact over the few years that i've been mayor <laughs> a lot of different things happening and uh certainly your your group has been very prominent in uh, the town of minto and one on just getting us through some really tough situations but also in getting us prepared for tough situations uh and we, that really proved out in a, with the flood and other things that we, we fell into so anyways Sorry, it's your last one, but take it away. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. So Mayor Bridge and members of council, uh, I have two reports uh, before you today. The first one is our annual emergency management report. And this is the first report that we're doing for councils for 2020. Arania um, Melgar, who's on the, the uh, council meeting today as well. She will, uh, she'll be leading the rest of the municipalities in the, in the additional reports, but Minto is, is complete. So we uh, have brought that uh, report forward. Just a couple of highlights as per usual, because I know council is very familiar with these reports. We did have, we were able to have our program committee meeting and we held it virtually on June 4th. And there is a copy of the minutes from that meeting attached to this report. The second one is a new emergency response plan and that's actually the next report. So I'll speak to that in a few minutes. Uh, training, so training this year uh, was, weren't sure as exactly what the compliance requirements were gonna be from the province. So we have in the past for those who haven't been able to participate in training, uh, been able to have them sign off with the competencies that the province requires through a form. And that's the process we started this year. And that is a process that the province has accepted again for this year. So at this point in time, the town of Minto control group has met those requirements, both primary and alternates. And then the other major piece that I want to talk about, of course, is our annual exercise. Um, and we're not doing an annual exercise this year because we've been living, I think, um, our <laughs> annual emergency management exercise this year. And there's also a memo attached showing that the, the province has amended the regulations for this year to exempt municipalities from the annual exercise. I think many have more than, than done what they could and and uh, the only thing we probably would have been able to test is a virtual exercise. And that's exactly what we've been testing throughout COVID. So the only other piece on there, of course, is public education. And we were able to, you know, with the aid of all of our partners, media partners through the uh, social media and Wellington Advertiser, as well as radio stations, able to continue with our pub ed for, for this year. Maybe not have our face-to-face -face, um, pub ed events like we've had, but we were still able to uh, to get our message out. So unless there's any questions, um, that's my report. Thank you. Thanks, Linda. Any questions for Linda? Nope, they're letting you off the hook, Linda, the last <laughs> report. Thanks. And I agree with you, we've been living the emergency measures as for the last little while on this. So. Yes, we have. Yeah, okay, it, now is there any, is that both reports? No, that's Mayor Bridge, there is a there is a motion for that report. Oh, sorry, sorry. I, yes, thank you, Annalene. You're not, not sitting beside me, but you're uh, keeping me under under control here. Okay. Moved by Councilor Gutson, second by Councilor Dirksen. The Council of the Town of Minnesota receives the Emergency Measure Manager C E M C 
annual emergency management report for 2020 accepts a report on the status of the town's emergency management program for 2020. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay. And the next one up. Okay. Thank you again, Mayor Bridge and members of council. So this is a report on a new emergency response plan that we've put together for um, 2020. The last one we the last one was in 2010, and the 2010 emergency response plan was primarily taking all of the former uh, emergency response plans for all eight municipalities, that's including uh, seven members in the county, and putting them into one document. So we were all, I think a big part of what's our, the success of our programs in Wellington has been our coordination. And I think having that, that one plan, although there is in some spots nuances for specific municipalities, particularly with respect to your emergency information officers and identifying those positions. But for the most part, it, it provides for a coordinated and consist consistent approach. There have been a few amendments to that plan over the years, but we've had, as you can see in the background, and as Mayor Bridge alluded to, particularly for Minto, um, a lot of events over the years that we have responded to. And as typical with all of our response events, as well as our exercises, we do after action reports. And in those after action reports, we often identify recommendations or improvements uh, to both our responses, as well as to our documents and our procedures. So we've looked at those and while some have been incorporated in the past, not everything's been incorporated. So we've taken a look at those and this plan is, is intended to try and compile all of the after action report information from the past 10 years into this document and make it a good document for, I think what we've been doing in terms of best practices in terms of our response um, and moving, allowing you to move forward with that plan into the future. There is no requirement for an, a five-year review or a 10-year review, I should say, like there is with our official plans, but uh, through the planning process, but there is that annual review. So your emergency management program committees have to review your emergency response plans on an annual basis. And we often do that um, at the time of an exercise or through training. There is a number of, of comments in there. We had two presentations over the summer uh, that I provided uh, Electron, um, virtually, and then we recorded it as well, and that was made available to municipalities to view on their own if they weren't uh, able to attend the virtual presentations. Just to highlight a couple of sections, um, item three under the comments, we've added a new subsection to address municipal orders. The declaration section is pretty much the same. It hasn't changed a whole lot, but given the process that we went through at the county with the order to support the section 22 order for Dr. Mercer. We felt it was appropriate to take a look at that and try and add kind of a checklist as to uh, what you might want to consider moving forward. We've had a number of consultations under item four with emergency control groups and their roles and responsibilities. And you can see the list of individuals that we or groups and organizations that we've worked through some of their roles and responsibilities to bring them uh, more in line with what they're uh, able to do today. Item six, financial considerations. So one of the groups that we did have consultation with was all of the treasurers in the county. And we, in the current plan, there's a lot of sections that speak to financial, whether it's funding or uh, roles and responsibilities for treasurers. So what we've done is we've tried to bring that into one section under financial considerations. It's, it's, it's easier for those responding to take a look at that section, but also because this is a public document, it sets all of those requirements and what we do in, in one section and, and easier for the public to take a look at, well, as, at it at, as well. Item seven, emergency social services. We've always had an emergency social services plan that we've utilized through our emergency social services, which is typically Wellington County Social Services, along with assistance that may be provided through our mutual assistance agreement with Red Cross. But I find sometimes having those separate documents, they sometimes get lost. And so what we've done is we've taken the policies of that document and we've incorporated them into the current emergency response plan 
Again, they're there forward facing for both the responders as well as for the public to have an idea of what they might see um, and what kinds of services they might see if and, and when we'd ever have to open up a, an evacuation center on a, on a larger scale. And then the last one I think is an important one and, and we went through this extensively um, and it's not that long ago so I think it's still fairly fresh is uh, the new debris management section. And that's to address how we start to look at handling debris in large emergency situations, whether it's uh, ice storm or whether it's even a snowstorm in some cases or uh, as we dealt with through the 2017 floods. It's by no means intended to be a comprehensive debris management plan, but again, it's a document, it's a piece that's in the document, which is a public document. It sets out a lot of different debris classifications. And I think it puts in there a lot of information that that's available publicly, but in one section where the public can see how debris may be handled from a solid waste services perspective. And then there's a few other sections in there and, and some additional changes that were made, minor changes that were made as a result of our consultation process to the emergency response plan in August. Um, and again, unless there is any questions, that's, the, uh, that's my report on the emergency response plan. Thank you. Thanks, Linda. Any questions for Linda? No? Seeing none. Uh, I will uh, move by Deputy Mayor Turton, second by Councilor McKenzie, that Council of the Town of Minnow receives the Emergency Management's 2020 Emergency Response Plan Report. And the Council authorize the passing of, of a bylaw adopting the 2020 Emergency Response Plan for the Town of Minnow and the County of Wellington member municipalities. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Did you want to introduce, Linda, your replacement? Um, sure. Um, I, yes. Is, is she on? I can't see yeah. her, but uh, very good. Yeah. So this yeah. is Arania Melgar. She's your new emergency manager, CMC. And um, I think maybe it's best if I let her introduce herself to everyone. Perfect. Well, thank you. Welcome, Arania. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon. Sorry, everyone. Uh, I'm looking forward to working with all of you. I'm coming from the city of Richmond Hill, and I'm very excited to be here. Thanks. And I'm sure we'll get a chance to meet you soon, and uh, that'd be that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that's it for that. Thank you, Linda and Urania. Yeah, thanks, Over. Linda. Good luck in your retirement. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, council, staff. It's been a, it's been wonderful. I know we've, had, I know we've had a lot of responses to work through a lot of things together, and um, I, I've always appreciated working with both council and staff in the town of Minto. So thank you very much, and all the best. Thanks, Linda. We always Linda, appreciate. It. If, I, if I could, Mr. Mayor. Oh yeah, Linda, sorry. Linda, known you for years. Excellent planner. You're very professional. Everything you've done, you moved in the emergency, would surprise me. But you've done a great job at that too. Did you miss the planning or the emergency? What do you, what do you miss the most, or are you going to miss the most? Um, I I enjoyed my time in the planning department, but I, I think, as I said to county council, um, at, at the county council, I think in terms of professionally, I've grown a lot in my role as the emergency manager, yeah. and I think a lot of skill sets I brought forward from my training as a as a planner in the at the county. So. Uh, one, I think, to help the other. Well, we're going to miss you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Next up, just so happens, we have a planner. Sort of. <laughs> so we have uh, Trade Engineering, uh, and Bill is going to be talking about, Bill White's going to be talking about the Palmer's Urban Boundary Expansion. We got Bill on? Uh, I'm here. Hello. I'll have to find you here, Bill. Hang on. Through you, Mayor Bridge. Uh, Bill is on. Uh, he, his camera is not on, but he is able to speak. Oh, oh there he is. is. Oh, he's on. There he is. Hi there. <laughs> you could see speak you earlier, Bill. That was really good. That's <laughs> that. I should ask you the same question we just asked Linda. I don't know if you heard. Like she was in the planning department, then went into the emergency. Uh, you were in the planning department and went into 
CEO. So which do you like better? Uh, retirement. Ah, good answer. Good answer. That was no, a tough one. I love being Minto CAO. Yeah. Anyways, well, welcome back and, uh, and looking forward to your report. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Mayor Bridge. Uh, sorry, Linda got on her way, but I wanted to wish her the best in her retirement. It's a pleasure to see all you again. Uh, when I saw Linda, I thought, remembered we had two ice storms, two uh, tornadoes, and two floods. <laughs> Who would have thought there was a plague not far behind? But yeah, that's right. That's right. I kept saying locust, but it's a plague instead. Yeah. Uh, so I'm here to give you an update on the draft official plan amendment for the Palmerston Urban Boundary. You have four documents that are before you. The main uh, document that I'm going to refer to is the presentation, um, but you also have a report that has quite a bit of detail in it quite a bit more detail than the presentation. And you also have the county draft official plan amendment, which uh, we've been discussing uh, with them for the last few weeks. And then you have a fairly lengthy policy detailed report. Uh, basically that is background material that uh, shows justification for proceeding with the amendment that has been drafted. And we can go through all these four documents in great detail if you wish, but they're really just there for information for you. I wanna try and keep it fairly high level at this point, uh, because there's a lot that's gone on since 2017. There is a fifth document that's referred to, and that is the land needs assessment that the county's done. Uh, that's with the staff of the town, but I just would say about that, and I think it's in the report, that it pretty much concurs with the growth projections that were done in 2017, 2018. So um, we'll get into that a little bit later on here. I hope to only be a few minutes with you, but what we'll cover is what's happened since 2017. We'll go into the North Clifford Secondary Plan and the West Palmerston Secondary Plan very briefly, and then we'll talk about the county draft amendment that we'd like to move forward with. Um, the reductions in Clifford, urban boundaries, the reduction in Harrison urban boundaries, and the increase in urban boundary in Palmerston that may be coming forward, and then some of the future land use that you'll see and the next steps. So if you would refer to the presentation, uh, the first slide is recent history. And we'll just go through that uh, fairly quickly. You may recall some of you that were on council in 2017 that we started the North Clifford and West Palmerston secondary plans because there was a new growth plan that came out back then. And uh, we wanna be ready for when the county five-year review started. And that was scheduled for what seemed to be a long time away in 2020. So that official plan review is uh, actually underway. I think COVID has delayed it to some degree, but it is ongoing and underway and will probably take months, if not into the years, to be completed. And uh, so the North Clifford Secondary Plan was started in 2017, and that informed the Elora Street reconstruction. Remember, there was some pre-servicing work that was done on Elora Street, kind of northwest of James Street, and that put sewer and water in front of uh, the old Wicked Sticks property, Bill Smith's property, some of the others out there. Uh, that was made public in November 2017, that secondary plan, and again went to council with some changes in 2018. Uh, the West Palmerston secondary plan started in 2018. They, that had a public meeting in September 2018, and that basically said that the urban boundary must expand to meet the needs, the land needs for residential in particular in Palmerston. Uh, for about a year or so after 2018, the town and the county had discussions on implementing those two secondary plans, but uh, the boundary expansion that was in the Palmerston one still had to go ahead under the county five-year official plan review. In other words, if you wanted to have more urban land in Palmerston, you would be participating in this five-year review that started now and, and would be going on probably into 2021 or maybe even later than that. So. That was the way it was back in 2017, 2018. 
And then last year in May, the province amended the growth plan and it allowed some boundary expansions, urban boundary expansions outside that county uh, five-year review. And there was a couple of ways of doing that, but um, Minto Council and staff discussed expanding the Palmerston boundary by reducing urban areas elsewhere. And there was some reports last year that you had about that and some back and forth. So finally, we're now at a part where uh, we can, I think, move forward with something that will be supportable at the county and uh, at the provincial level. Was there any questions at this point or? Good. So the next slide is a North Clifford secondary plan. And what you see on that slide is a bunch of colors and I don't know how clear it is to you on your, uh, on what you're looking at it on, but basically Alora Street runs through the middle and those colors are future land uses and there's roadways, future roadways and trails and things set out on it. So that's what a secondary plan kind of laid out. Now that map or that schedule is not part of the county uh, schedule yet, but that is one that was done by staff in order to see how much land could be out there and what could happen on that property. In the corner, you see a chart and that's the county growth projection to 2041. So for Clifford, for example, the county projected that there needed to be 165 future residential units built in Clifford to meet the need in uh, that the county had set. So um, that's uh, seven or eight units a year, roughly. And uh, I think that Minto's been meeting that fairly regularly since 2016, but in that North Clifford area that's shown on that map, there is more than enough land to meet that residential need. So that's land inside the urban boundary that could uh, be used for future residential growth. So the secondary plan for North Clifford concluded that there was enough land in that area alone to meet the need for residential in Clifford. The West Palmerston secondary plan, again, that schedule is not in the county, uh, not approved by the county and not, not approved, but it is something that has been laid out to kind of show what the area could be used for. And what we determined when that work was done was that there was not enough serviceable land in the urban boundary to meet the 635 household units needed to meet the county growth projection for Palmerston. In fact, only about half of it was in available within the existing urban area. And that was if all of them developed all the way out. So basically what you have is a Clifford secondary plan saying you have enough land, in fact, more than enough land. You have the West Palmerston secondary plan stating that you don't have enough land. In fact, you're halfway, only halfway there. So that in 2018 was what brought up the need for expanding the urban boundary in West Palmerston. Uh, you can also see the landfill, old landfill in Palmerston way off to the, I guess that'd be the East End. Um, we had to address the setbacks from that landfill. And I'll talk a little bit about that later because obviously a landfill can affect what you put close to it as far as future housing. And also there was a need for industrial land uh, back in 2017, 2018, there was quite a huge demand for it and the town was looking to expand the industrial part. So that's that kind of purple area shown on that schedule. Uh, next, amending the official plan, that slide. Before COVID hit uh, last uh, January, February, the county had done a draft amendment to implement some of the changes that uh, were put forward in the North Clifford's planning area. Uh, I'm not sure if you've had that public meeting yet or not, but uh, um, in any event, um, uh, you would need to have a public meeting. We had reviewed that amendment before and it looked uh, fine to, to Triton. And uh, if and when that comes forward or if it hasn't gone forward yet, you certainly could proceed with that at any time. I believe, Derek, we have done that. Uh, through you, Ms. Murray, yeah, we, we did do that in uh, Clifford in one of our first uh, open yeah. meetings, as a matter of fact. Yeah, so that's done, Bill. 
Good. Great. Terry had mentioned that, and I had a quick glance through, but I the agenda, but I couldn't find it. But that that's just me getting aged. Um, the, in this summer, the county also prepared an official plan amendment to implement part of the West Palmerston Secondary Plan. And that has been subject to some discussion between staff, uh, town staff and county staff uh, for the last few weeks. And the town staff and Triton are now recommending that that go ahead to a public meeting. And, and what that will do, it will give the town a 200, I'm gonna use acres if council doesn't mind, 202 acre urban boundary expansion in Palmerston going ahead sort of right away but there would be a 185 acre reduction in urban boundary in Clifford and Hairston. Right. Um, sorry. The next slide says Clifford urban boundary reductions. So those are the area areas in red, sort of a red hatching, and that, those are at the primarily at the farmlands south of Clifford, and what I would call the lowlands around. The sewage lagoons and John Holman Park, or it's shown as Rotary Park. I added that in the slide. So, in that slide, you can kind of see where the North Clifford planning area is, the lagoons, and those red areas, which would be removed from the Clifford urban boundary. Uh, based on a quick growth projection in the lands that remain in the urban boundaries, there's well over 200 units that can be created, uh, not only in North Clifford, but other parts of Clifford to meet. So we're well over what we need to meet the need in the future. That's through to 2041. Uh, but there would be 146 acres that would come out of the urban area. These are not serviced areas right now or have limited servicing. And I believe over the last year or so, a town staff had met with those landowners and talked about that. And from what I understand, um, there's been provisions made for any of their concerns. The next slide shows the Harrison urban boundary reductions. That's uh, hashed in red again. If you wanna orient yourself as to where the heck that is, you can see I put on that slide, the town industrial park, the sewage lagoons, and a couple of parcels that the town owns, 11 acres and 35 acres that still remain in the urban boundary and can still be serviced in the future. I can assure you that over 400 units can be created in Harriston to meet the 400 units needed through to 2041. So uh, this boundary reduction does not really affect that. In fact, uh, those of you who are on council a few years back would remember the class environmental assessment that was done for the Harriston Industrial Park. And that helped let, let you know how you could service the expanded area and how the road system would work. So even though uh, 38 acres may come out of that. Those lands were kind of at the far end of the expansion and would not have gravity service flow. So you'd still have 46 acres that you could expand into for future industrial in Harriston. So those are the two area, the areas that we reduced in Harriston and in Clifford. If you go onto the slide entitled Promised an Urban Boundary Increase, that is shown in the on that slide in green hashed areas, that's the 202 acres. Also on that slide, you can see where the old landfill site is, where the town industrial park is in Palmerston. Of course, it's all kind of north and west of White's Road and Main Street and uh, kind of east of Highway 23. So uh, again, with that land being added to the urban boundary, there would be enough residential lands to meet the 635 units needed in Palmerston. So this is a very critical expansion. Um, the industrial land lost in Harriston would be applied into Palmerston. So there's also room to expand the industrial park. And wanted to let you know that the engineering analysis that you had asked for last year on the old landfill did confirm that the the setback from that landfill could be reduced from 500 meters to 30 meters. So that's a very, very important uh, study because if the, if the 500 meters had remained in the, uh, as a restriction, half that land kind of to the west and north would not be developable. So 
uh, it was very good to find that out. The county has looked at that study and, and peer reviewed it, and I think they're supportive of that setback. A couple of special little spots that are not in, are, are different, but are included in the urban expansion lands around Let Street and around the Jane Street expansion. So we'll talk a little bit about them on the next slide. Uh, just to point out, lands at the corner of County Road 123 and Highway 23, if you see there's kind of a, a spot there that's white, it's not included in the green, they're not in the boundary expansion. And the reason for that is, as I've mentioned, there's this trade-off in land amounts. And so the county did not, uh, does not support adding that at this time. So I think we're fine going ahead with this expansion. It's very, very important that at least this amount get added right now. The next to last slide shows you future land use in Palmerston. So if you look at that slide, you can see Main Street kind of along the bottom and Highway 23 on the left side. You can see the landfill in purple on the right side. And that big purple uh, section kind of to the middle of the, of the map is the current industrial park. So that would be Minto Road extending into there. So there's three or four hatched areas that we should talk about. The first one, if you see on the map, where it says PA 5.9, and then above there, there's kind of a hatched area. That is the Heinmiller subdivision. Uh, that had two phases. Uh, I can't recall the exact number of units that were was in it, but that whole subdivision has now been resolved and is being designated residential in this amendment, which is a good thing that had been held back for probably close to 10 years because of a an Ontario Municipal appear, Board appeal by the uh, province. So as part of this amendment, that, that section goes into residential, which is a good thing for that subdivision. And I know there's been some interest in that subdivision, not only by Mr. High Miller himself, but others looking at it. So the other sections that are kind of at the end of Jane Street and at the end of Brunswick Street they would also become residential. Those do have access or close access to uh, municipal servicing. And so because those are part of what the county calls the old town plan, they actually were thought of as part of Palmerston when Palmerston was first laid out in the 1800s. They, they have added those as residential now, which just gives that extra little bit of residential land uh, in the future for Palmerston. And then the, the Heinmiller farm, and I guess what I call the Wormley farm, I'm not sure who's there anymore, but the Heinmiller, the rest of the Heinmiller farm and that farm at the end of Jane Street would all be future development. And in that future development area, before new land uses and roads could be established, then certain scalable studies have to be done. What that means is scalable means hopefully there doesn't need to be a great deal of work that it would be very expensive and time consuming because a lot of the background has been done uh, has been done in that secondary plan that I already showed you. In fact, if you go back to that earlier slide, there's preliminary road layouts and all sorts of things in that. So I think the county is recognizing in the amendment that there has been quite a bit of work done there, but but those two big farms will still remain as future development for now. And then when developers come along, then the, the detailed studies would be completed by them before, uh, before they could go ahead with development and get residential on it. So what are the next steps? And does anybody have any questions about material that I've presented yet or so far? Judy and then Dave. Um. Thanks, Bill, um, and thanks for uh, uh, the way you present makes it very easy to follow along when we can't see the screen. So it's great whenever you tell us what screen you're on. That's, that's a really big help. Um, just wondering with these uh, urban reductions, let's, so it's 20 years out, 21 years out. What if in 10 years we find out things are not as they were, um, thought to be or that they things 
things don't turn out the way that they uh, are guessed to be. Um, what um, what recourses are like? Can can things get switched around again? Does it does it have to happen in the five year review? Does in theory apply for an expansion to these urban areas outside the five-year review if circumstances changed depending on uh, on need but I, I don't know if you remember it it did say that you could have a hundred eight hectare expansion so smaller ones and that that could still happen uh, outside the five-year review but so I, I think the short answer is yes you're kind of stuck with it but the new policies are still there if something were to change, you could still apply using those exemptions in the province's policies. And also, as we go through the five-year review, I think Minto might want to talk to the county about making sure that this is enough, particularly in Palmerston, where things are really uh, uh, clipping along, I think. So you might want to talk about it in 2020, 2021, and so forth, that corner land, for instance, that they pulled out whether you might want to put it back in or some other lands in Palmerston. So I think the town will be stuck, but I think we want to keep sort of the discussion going about adding more lands in the current five-year review. And then as things change in the future, you can always apply those exemptions and try to expand it outside again. So you are somewhat restricted, but not there. You don't have options. Let's put it that way. You do have options. Okay. Thank you. Do you have, do have options, yes. Okay. Uh, Mayor thank Turton, you. did you have a? Yes, thank you, uh, Mayor Bridge. I, I agree with Judy and she stole my question, but Bill, ever since day one, uh, you've always made things extremely easy to understand with your ability to put it together. It's really hard to fathom. I, I That was my question, the Judy uh, uh, question. 21 years isn't a long time and it's really hard to fathom looking at the future land use of West uh, Palmerston. To, to think that all that land will be full of houses and industries. So, but I mean, you know, you look at the last 20 years, but look at the last five years, the last eight years, it's been crazy. So, but thank you for the report. Yeah, thanks. Anybody else? I, I just want to add one thing and, and I, it was a good question, Judy. Um, one of the reasons why we were doing this, remember, is the fact that if we wait for the OPA, for the county, then we're up with everybody else. Like, so, you know, as, as when they had places to grow, they basically said, one in county gets X number of places to grow or plate units or how you want to do your urban boundaries. Minister Clark came up and said, really, uh, we don't believe that we have to force everybody into a, a high rise in downtown Toronto or whatever, or into Barrie or to Peel or whatever that is. And he said, we're going to open it up and let small towns grow again. So we're taking advantage of that opportunity right now. But I think going forward, as we work through the OPA, and as Bill said, it'll probably be a couple of years, doesn't mean we might not want to look at where we also can expand, but this way we'll get ourselves back into where we should be. And because we're not involving any other community and only ourselves, we're actually just trying to get the best rationalization of what we've got in all three communities to make sure that we, we come to those uh, growth pro projections. So. I think Bill's did a great job, and, and I really do also say, Bill, that it was well laid out and easy to follow. So uh, thanks for that. Deputy Every, Mayor. I have one more question, sorry. Bill, so when I was looking at that same picture, the West, the future land use West Palmerston, there, uh, I mean, I realize that 123 there is splitting Palmerston, and there's still part of Palmerston is on the uh, south side of 123, but is there, is there nothing over on the other side of uh, Main Street or is the uh, 123 the restriction? Right, so on the other side, if I may, uh, through you, Mayor Bridge, that, that's actually North Perth, I guess, yep. in there. So uh, one of the things we talked about in the more detailed secondary plan is whether it would be appropriate to amalgamate with North Perth, uh, at least bring some of those lands into here. But I think it was concluded that was that process might be a little fraught with extra administration you don't want 
And so uh, that's why this area, we, we focused on this area. It could meet the needs that the town had in Palmerston, we, we believe, for industrial and residential. So on that other side is North Perth. And I, I don't think you ever want to forget about that because I think there's some lands in North Perth, especially around the King, King Hotel that are kind of funny. But anyway, yeah, that, that, that could be included maybe someday, but it's not part of it right now. Thanks, Bill. Any other questions? Okay, I have a recommendation here, I believe. Uh, moved by Councillor Gutson, second by Councillor Elliott, that the Minto Council receives the draft official plan amendment, policy review, and land needs prepared by Wellington County regarding the Palmerston Urban Boundary Expansion, that an application for official plan amendment be filed at the county based on the format received, including the September 30th, 2020 presentation and the report from Triton Engineering, as well as other supportive documents. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thanks, Bill. And Mayor Bridge, if I could, just to, to finish off very, very quickly. Oh, sorry, I um, thought you were done. But no, I pretty much am. <laughs> so when you get your answer you're looking for, I should just move on, but. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wanted to say uh, just a couple points on that last slide. Uh, you will need to have a public meeting in the coming weeks that the five-year official plan review is ongoing. Your CAO was part of that technical committee and he's kind of asked me to help support him in that. And we've had some conversations with the county yep. as that's going through. And then the last point, there was a, new, a recent change to the growth plan. And now, now the county has to do forecast to 2051, which adds another 10 years of growth. So to that point about whether that's enough land for Minto and the various areas, uh, planning for another 10 years of growth is another 500 and some units across Minto. So I think you should keep that in the back of your mind as you're going through that five year review that another 500 units is, will need quite a bit of land area. Right. So I'm not sure how that will pan out. And so that'll be part of what uh, will come out of the county and the CAO as, as we go through it. But the good news is this all expansion doesn't get mired down in all that discussion. It can go ahead now. Yeah, and as I said before, I think uh, this, this present government wants us to move forward as fast as we can on development. And we're already seeing it, that we're seeing more and more people coming from big urban centers now that they can work from home, they can do other things. We're seeing a, a big push out to our area. So the sooner we get this part of it done, and then we look for the future. I totally agree. We can look for the future. And I, I would want you to be hopefully somebody preparing us for the, the talks with the county on the, on the next five-year plan and then an the additional 10. So we'll keep that in mind. Thank you for that uh, reminder, for sure. Okay. Thank you. It was great seeing you all again. Thank you very much. Take care, Bill. So, yep. Bye. Bye. Okay. And we had Belinda here, but we lost her just at the last second there. So um, there's a signage grant. And Derek, are you going to take this? Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor and members of council. I am, uh, again, Belinda Wickram today. Yeah. Um, this is a pretty straightforward signage grant. Uh, you have a recommendation before you. Uh, <clears throat> so it's for $475 for the property located at uh, 21 Laura Street, Clifford, the Red Express and staff are recommending uh, you approve the grant. Okay, questions? Hearing none. Move by Councilor Dirksen, second by Councilor Gunson. The Council of Town of Middle receives the September 18, 2020 report for the business and economic manager regarding signage improvement grant application D07 for the amount of $475 for the property located on 21 Alora Street, Clifford. The Red Express and approves this grant. All in favor? Opposed, if any? Passed. Thank you. And I have one more there, Derek? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, again, this is a facade improvement of grant, uh, and it's for 405 Main Street, Palmerston, and that's Harper Homes. Uh, staff are recommending uh, the approval of this grant, and uh, I'm happy to hopefully answer any questions you may or may not have. Okay, questions? Don't see any. 
Thank you. Uh, let's get the right one here. Moved by Councillor McKenzie, sec seconded by Deputy Mayor Turton. The Council of Town of Middle receives the September 28, 2020 report from the Business Economic Manager regarding facade improvement grant P19 for $2450 and signage improvement grant P16 for the amount of $1,000 property located on 405 Main Street, East Palmerston. Harper Homes and approves this grant. All in favor? Opposed? Passed. Thank you. And I'll turn the chair over to Councillor Elliott to assume the chair. You never want me to unmute. Got the floor can talk, right? Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Matt if he's there somewhere. And he's a director of community services. And he'll be reporting on North Wellington Healthcare Rental Agreement. Matt? Thank you, Councillor Elliott. Um, and good afternoon, members of Council. Um, before you, you'll see an agreement <clears throat> and a covering report regarding North Wellington Healthcare and the um, usage as of today of the Harrison train station for a COVID assessment center. Um, you may be aware the one at the North Wellington Sportsplex in Mount Forest closed down last month and they wanted to look at having one in the, in the northern Wellington area. So the Harrison train station looked like a viable option and uh, we've got an agreement in place and I'd welcome any questions at this time. No questions. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, we'll make a motion that the Council of the Town of Meadow receives a Director of Community Service report regarding the North Wellington healthcare agreement and that the council considers a bylaw authorizing the mayor and clerk to sign this agreement in open session. No more questions on, oh yes, we have one. Mark, you're in favor. All in favor. Yeah, no, I was asking one, sorry. Oh, are we asking a question? Sorry. I guess what, like, in the agreement, is there, is there revenue from this or is it a freebie or what are we doing? Uh, through Councillor Elliott, uh, there, there is, we will be receiving uh, 200 a week uh, for the duration of their stay. Um, this, it's, it's looking like it's going to be an ongoing thing, but yeah. uh, that's why we went with a weekly rate. So we are, we are generating some revenue. Just, we're not trying to make money off of this or get rich or anything. It's more just to cover the operating expenses that, that we'll still incur at that facility. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, Matt, is anybody else using the, the station once they're there? No. Uh, so what will happen is right now it's Tuesday and Thursday by appointment only. Uh, right. But any other day of the week, they, there, there's no other activity in there. And that's more just that they can keep it set up as is and for sanitization um, and, and just overall cleanliness. Okay. Any more questions? Thank you, Chair Ron Elliott. So any any activity that was going on there, and if you answered this, I might not have been sleeping, or I might have been sleeping. Um, other activities that was going on will be moved to someplace else in town, or has there been nothing going on? Uh, for the most part, there's been nothing going on. Uh, I'd say 90% of the activities have been postponed indefinitely. There were a couple of groups that, um, under the right protocols, could have used it, but we've since relocated them. Thank you. Okay, uh, all in favor of that motion? Opposed? Thanks, Matt. Thank you. And now, uh, I assume I'm keeping the chair. Uh, children, children's program corner, I West. IYSN update, and I believe Jessica has this. I do, thank you, Councillor Elliott. Hello, Mayor and Councillors. I am going to attempt to share my screen here. Um, there we go. Um, just so everyone can kind of see where I'm at. Uh, Bill did a great job of having you all follow along. I don't know if I could have done the followed up that act, so it's better to have it on the screen here. Um, I'm just here to provide a little bit of an update as uh, in regards to the IYSN Youth Hub site in Palmerston. So we have signed our lease in Palmerston on Main Street right beside the high school, and we've done some 
exciting thing since I've last spoken to council. Um, so I'm going to share some things now uh, where we're at. So um, this is just a little overview of what I'm going to talk about. Our youth engagement, the renderings for the building and our vision for the design that we're hoping. The partners who are involved in this um, initiative as well as our next step. So our youth engagement, uh, I've put an emphasis on this before. Our youth are our experts and we're wanting to engage them the most we can. Um, this space isn't gonna be utilized if we don't engage our youth because our youth know what they need. We don't know what they need right now. Um, so we've done some major youth engagement sessions, um, August 6th, 18th and 28th and this past summer. Um, we did some youth engagement sessions to help us design the space. We wanted this to be a space that youth were drawn to and comfortable with um, and just had some, some tie into it. They had their voices heard, so we wanted them to be involved. So we had about nine to 15 youth on and off at each of these sessions to have their voices heard. We had one student from Norwell actually um, put together a survey and sent it out and we got uh, information from 70 different youth at the high school during the global pandemic and the summer. So I thought that was a great response and uh, they really contributed to the renderings that I'm going to show you next. Um, but the youth engagement sessions were very engaging and um, very eye-opening for us for what they wanted in these spaces. It went from what kind of color um, theme do you want to what kind of services do you want and how do we make that happen in that space. So moving on to the renderings. These renderings are our um, ideas. They're not set in stone. We're, um, it's not exactly how it might turn out, but they're good ideas of how we want this space to look. We have a designer um, from Murphy Design. Her name is Angela, and she did an awesome job of um, giving us some visuals of what this space might look like. So as you see on the front here, here's the front look of the um, the building and then on the bottom right of the screen, uh, you kind of have an overview of what the space will look like in there. Um, a very open concept room, um, colorful industrial flair. Um, the staff or the youth really wanted that kind of coffee house industrial feel. Uh, so Angela took that information that she's gotten and went uh, with it on her designs. Um, you'll see this overview and then it'll take you through some of the rooms uh, closer up. So here we have that multi-purpose room with a with some bright chairs, a pool table for some rec and leisure activities. Um, and then on the bottom side, uh, bottom right, you see the study pods for a little bit more of an intimate area. We're actually going to be working with the school to see if the wood shop and any of those um, those classes would be interested in building some things like that. Those are the ways, like these are designs, but we're hoping to get involved with our community more to have some onus in this space. Um, some high top tables for youth to use to study at, to just sit together and work. Um, if we have workshops, there's lots of table space um, there for gathering. Uh, this is also in that uh, multi-purpose room. Uh, we have the hanging egg chairs that's uh, been proven the hanging egg chairs just the slight motion um, can reduce anxiety so we've talked about putting those in there too talking to a friend and just kind of that soothing sway can uh, help with anxiety uh, and then this space can do for webinars if we wanted to move some chairs around it for youth to um, sit around or just for rec and leisure purposes to hang out um, right there on the bottom right you'll see the reception area what we have decided we're going to do is we're going to use the main entrance as the entrance right across from the EC Gray at Norwell. So students can just walk across the, the road um, and enter in there. We've talked about making it accessible um, so all students can access that space. Um, and uh, we thought that place might be better than the front, uh, front door. So that's how we set up the reception desk. Um, right here is the small kitchenette. Um, there is a kitchenette in this space already, so we wanted to build on that. So it has plumbing and everything already. We just have to do some moving around. Um, Angela put together a nice industrial flair, a little bit of color, um, floating shelves, and um, these are some things that are going to be moved around, obviously, as we meet with our contractors and um, our contractor, as well as the uh, 
the tradesmen. So um, the ideas are here and we're really excited to see them. Uh, this is going to be one counseling room. So what we decided is two counseling rooms. I don't know if anybody remembers that old building. Um, I know Terry was in there with us the other day and the one space was the old arcade in those in that spot. We're going to separate the room into two rooms to have a counseling room or to have two counseling rooms, sorry. Um, each with a theme. So these rooms aren't only used for counseling. Um, when they're not being used for counseling, they can be used for private conversations with friends or a safe space to sit and hang out and do some homework that's a little bit more private. Uh, so we didn't want to just put it directly only for counseling and then it's closed off. Um, so the first one is the green chandelier room. It's kind of that funky, it'll have some music um, instruments on the wall that we're applying for grants for. Um, and youth have asked a lot about music lessons in there or um, musical instruments uh, to express creativity. So that's kind of uh, put an emphasis on why we want some of uh, some musical instruments in this space. And the other one is a French uh, front porch themed room. So a swinging couch, um, some decking on the boards, just really relaxed. Uh, the, the idea was when you're sitting on the front porch, you want it to be relaxing. So that's kind of the theme we went with. And this was the, these were from the youth, what they wanted. So um, pretty cool to see their uh, creativity come. And then there'll be a staff room for uh, staff to make their case notes uh, onto our privacy, uh, uh, how do I say this, the system that they're developing. Um, I've got some information on that uh, as we're developing it. And then there will be two bathrooms. One will be wheelchair accessible and the other one, um, we will make them gender neutral bathrooms as well and um, this is kind of the design space for that. And then this was an idea for exterior update. We've talked and maybe gonna make this a down the road project for the exterior update. Our, um, the importance right now is the inside so we can get it open and running for our youth. And uh, this is an awesome idea for when we um, maybe can fundraise down the road for um, some more exterior uh, designs. Um, for our partners, uh, I don't know if many of you know, but Mapleton has decided to hop on board with us um, and uh, Manny and Mayor Davidson, uh, myself and Cindy have met about fundraising opportunities uh, within the Mapleton Township. Um, so these are the partners, Mapleton, uh, the Town of Minto, Minto Mental Health and the Integrated Youth Services Network. And our next steps are to reach out to town and mental businesses to see what their interest is in this um, initiative. And if they want to um, partner in this in any way uh, financially or um, in any other sort of way. And then I'm working with uh, myself and Cindy are working with Mapleton, Manny and Mayor Davidson uh, to have meetings with um, businesses in their community as well to see what their interest is in the uh, initiative as well. So I would welcome any questions um, about this initiative. I think first we'll do the motion, then we'll do questions. How's that? Okay, sounds good. Right. Uh, moved by Councillor Gunson and second by Councillor Dirksen, the Town of Minto receives the IYSN update report from the Children's Program Coordinator for information. Okay, now I'll take questions. Or Jess will. Uh, Deputy Mayor Turton, please. Thank you, Ron. It's, it's not a question, Jess. I think this is a beautiful, beautiful situation for our, our youth. And, and I mean, it's not just for the youth. It's for a lot of seniors, a lot of uh, mid-life people like myself, I think, to, you know, to, to, to see that our young kids are getting an opportunity to develop, to get help, to, to work with with you and to work with uh, other professionals. I mean, I, I just think it's wonderful. So uh, thank you for all your hard work on this. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Dr. McKenzie, you're next, sorry. Thank yes. you, Mr. Chair. Jessica, what measures do you have for, uh, to prevent this from turning into a class spare venue and, and a hangout? So we are actually welcoming any form of uh, recreation in this, facility as well. We don't want to um, 
turn away any youth. So we actually are encouraging of our youth if they have a spare to come to this place. Uh, one, to get the feel that it is a safe space for them to come to. Uh, the idea is that it'll always be staffed. So um, there will be rules and um, policies in place for when youth are in there. But essentially we want this space to not only be for mental health, we want it to be for recreation and um, also for a safe space for our youth to go because they're um, there's been a lot of voices that we've heard that they don't have a safe space to go. They don't have a space to sit and hang out where they feel comfortable. Um, so we've worked with the school a little bit about how we can in involve them. And we also have had um, some ideas of how if they come on their spares, and they come on their spare time, how this might encourage them, because we do recognize the stigma is still there, it might encourage them to get the help that they need in um, whatever form that is. If they wanna come in and there is a, as a class going on and they're not registered, maybe they'll be like, hey, this seems interesting to me because we wanna reach those youth that maybe, maybe they are skipping and maybe they are uh, not in a good space. If they come here, we want to really grab a hold of that and be and take the preventative measures instead of have to be reactive. Thanks. No problem. Uh, just on that, remember this isn't just for students. So Jess knows, like we we have, we're going to have up to age twenty four. I think is our age 26. 27, 26. Yeah. 26. So we might have to have class times after after school and whatever that we're going to hopefully get people in and, and we'll work on that programming. And what I really love about this is Jess is going to be the person, the lead person on this and she really has a handle on how to deal with youth um, because it's not easy. I mean, um, so I really think Jess with the right proper uh, uh, rooms and everything that's going on and it'll be a learning curve as we go forward. But uh, I, I think you hit it dead on, Jess. It, it's kind of, we have to have that open door policy. And then once they feel comfortable that that's their place that they can go and down the road get help if they need it. But at the end of the day, just have a great place to interact with our, with our great youth of the community, right? Any other questions or comments? Seeing, seeing none, all in favor of the motion. Oh, right. Mayor, oh sorry, Councillor Elliott, uh, CAO Tom, someone would like to speak. Yeah, I saw that. Thank you, uh, Chair yeah. Elliott. I appreciate that. So, Council, I I just want to bring your to your attention um, the efforts of Jessica. So, you may have heard over the last couple of weeks that we did have a person in distress, um, homeless, um, living in one of our parts. Um, this person was well known by authorities and over the last several months was unable to get any help until our Jessica got involved and found her alternative housing and the help that she needed. And I have re received multiple comments from the OPP and others about what a great, not only person she is, but what a fantastic advocate she is for mental health in our community. So she should be congratulated for her work as not only a person, but also as an employee the town of Minto and deserves that recognition. So thank you very much, Jessica. Thank you, Derek. Hey. Thank you. All in favor of that motion. That's carried. Um, I guess I'll give the chair back to the mayor who can give it to Councillor Dirksen, I assume. Thank you for that handoff, Councillor Elliott, and, and the re-handoff to Councillor Dirksen. I think, see how we're getting this figured out? Yeah, go now, ahead, Councillor Dirksen. Getting pretty smooth now. Okay, um, so we have two items on the public works agenda today, and uh, we're going to ask uh, Mike, and he's kind of tagging with... Uh, Mark and with Todd, and uh, I think it wins a prize for the longest report maybe on this 350 page um, agenda today. Uh, but I'll hand it over to uh, our roads and drainage manager to take us through it. Thank you, Councillor Dirksen. Uh, the first item is uh, the update to the municipal servicing and design standards, uh, which we supply to all the developers or uh, um, for commercial industrial residential properties within the town of Minto, 
uh, to provide them with some guidance uh, throughout the, uh, the planning stages um, for the whatever development they, they choose. Um, it, it is a working document, so it is constantly changing with uh, updates to provincial, federal, or other government agency standards. Um, so it is uh, constantly evolving. And the last major update completed to this uh, to the standards was in 2016. So um, roughly every few years, we try to do uh, an overhaul uh, to provide that uh, additional guidance to developers as they come to the, to the municipality. Is there any questions for this one? Um, Councillor Elliott, did you have a question? No. And you're on mute if you are trying to say something to us. I was low on battery, so I had to move my video machine around. That's, you got a close up of me now. Yep. All so right. plug in. That's all it was. We can, we can handle it. Anyone else have any questions? Okay. Um, according to my notes here, this is moved by Deputy Mayor Turton and seconded by Councillor McKenzie that the Council of the Town of Minto receive the Municipal Servicing and Design Standards Report for information. I'm glad the staff deals with this document, not us. Okay. Any questions? Last chance. Okay. All in favor? Uh, sorry. You see those hands again here. Yep. Yep. We're good. Okay. Carries. Thank you. All right, and the next item, 99, is the pre-approved contractors lists. And, yes. uh, yep, sorry. I'll turn that back to you. Thank you. So uh, just to go along with the uh, previous report with the standards, uh, we also uh, have, have provided a, a pre-approved contractors list uh, to be used for developers uh, for municipal right-of-way works, um, as well as uh, um, joint efforts between a, a developer and uh, the, the town uh, to provide uh, uh, competitive pricing as well as uh, um, the opportunity for developers to have, have an opportunity to use different uh, contractors for their works. Um, and the idea with this too is to keep this open-ended in case there is a, a new contractor uh, to the area, if they provide the town with the uh, appropriate documentation, they could then be uh, uh, added to this list as well. Okay. Any questions? Yep. Any questions? Okay, I'll read the uh, recommendation moved by Councillor Elliott and seconded by Mayor Bridge. The Council of the Town of Minto receives the pre qualified contractors for municipal services report for information. And further, that the town of Minto provide for an ongoing invitation to contractors to submit their proposals. Okay, all in favor? And thank you, that carries. And we will turn that chair back to the mayor. And you're on mute. Thank you, uh, Councillor Dixon. And I will turn it back over to Deputy Mayor Turton to take the chair on finance. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. We've got a couple of items that we'd like to talk to in reference to Treasury here, Gord. Uh, first one being is the uh, aggregate resource property valuation and advocacy. Great. All right. Thank you, Chair Turton. Uh, so this is a report that uh, we were requested to bring forward by the uh, County Finance Department. So this has been a, a long uh, issue. Um, the whole matter of valuing, like in plain English, gravel pits is what we're talking about. And uh, MPAC, who's the Municipal Property Assessment Corporation, changed the methodology a few years ago. And basically, they uh, assign a value of uh, equivalent to very poor farmland for this property. And even though many in the, the finance and other departments believe it's closer to industrial. So the County of Wellington has really been a, a leader in this whole initiative and they've worked with other municipalities and industries and all that to try and come up with a, a more fair uh, assessment thing. And I, I'm sure our mayor is very familiar with this issue too because it's frequently being brought to County of Wellington Council. So 
Town of Minto is not a major player in this. Uh, we don't have that much uh, aggregate in our area, but of course, anything that helps the county as a whole helps our levy in that too. And, uh, you know, I think it is a matter of fairness. So I hardly endorse their efforts and uh, the, uh, the county hopes that the town of Minto will endorse them too. Mayor Bridge. You're on mute. Yep, got it. Thanks, uh, Deputy Mayor Turton. Yeah, so I will speak to it a bit, uh, and thanks, Gord, for your description. Uh, over the years, we felt that it, it's a funny thing, you know, the pendulum swings sometimes, and a few years ago, I guess, the pendulum swung very heavily into uh, aggregate uh, development was getting hit pretty hard with high taxes. So they, of course, they went to the table and they asked for a reduction and then the pendulum swung, unfortunately, way too far the other way. So we're trying to come up back to where in the middle is more important. Um, it's been a long battle. Wellington County's taken this this on with uh, a couple other, well, mostly Wellington County, and then some other people have come and uh, fought the battle with us. But we're getting close to the end, and I think we're getting some good resolve with the industry itself. I was looking at it because a few years back, I, it wasn't hit, as you said, Gordon, it didn't hit us as much, but one of our smaller uh, townships below Guelph, uh, they had about a worked out to about 12 or 14 percent of their budget was taken away from them just overnight. Boom! Like because they they had all these gravel pits there that ended up having a big break on their taxes. And as you know, they've already had the taxes paid to them, and then they had to give back the taxes. It's even worse. So that was a really tough situation. That's when we started thinking about it. So overall, if it helps, we have a lot of. Uh, bigger in the south of us have more gravel pits and, and only the north has quite a few too. Um, we're not hit as bad on a budget side, but if, if the county gets this rectified and brings it back into the middle a little bit more, it'll help all our tax base because what's happening in these other communities is the residents, the residential taxes are going up to support. So a good example is, and that was brought up at the county when this came forward, was right now in, in the town of Erin or Push Lynch, um, a rural residential property pays more taxes than a hundred acre gravel pit. That doesn't seem reasonable when you figure what the trucks on the road and all the other stuff that's going on. So I think we're going to get it back closer to the middle and I totally support this. And we're just supporting our overall residents of Wellington County if we get this uh, rectified. So any questions I can answer them, but. Questions for our, our mayor or our treasurer? Uh, so we have how many in Minto? Like, so when you're talking the about properties? a small, medium, or large gravel pit, yeah. are we talking uh, a large gravel pit, 100 acres? And um, I understand it depends on how much gravel's in there or sand or whatever, but. That's right. Uh, some of it is actually agriculture. Like just of a, kind of a, to put it in perspective, they did a, a study for 2013 and 16 and Minto's share was 16,000, and the total was 800,000, and the municipality of Pusslands was 644,000. So it's significant on a county level. Um, it, it's material to us, but, but not the same. Um, and, and as the mayor said, it, it, it's kind of an overreaction to maybe it was an injustice before, but they've overcorrected. and. Uh, uh, the county's working towards resolving the whole situation. Questions yeah. to the board? Uh, Mayor Bridge, go ahead. And Dave, just to tell you, like when I say a hundred acre gravel pit operation, so they might only be operating 10 acres at a time. So what happens is those 10 acres become taxed at a different rate than the 90 acres that are left that they're, they're taxing at, they say, uh, a really low grade farm thing. So. That, that's what it is. It's 100 acres, but not all. Normally, we don't have 100 acre units sure. working, but and they'll move from one to the other as, as they go and they have to reclaim. So, it, you know, it, it is, uh, it, it just doesn't make sense from, from where we're at. Councillor McKenzie, do you have a question? Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. So, Gord, th this is a, it's a motion in support of the initiative here to, to for, uh, on, on assessment, but 
That's right. Who's going to lay the assessment out here? Is it impacts? The province has to go through the county or impact or who? No, it, it's it's totally impact. So if any change happens, um, they'll be the ones to make it. Uh, whether retroactively, probably not, but at least on a go forward basis. And as we say, the whole uh, tax assessment, it, it's a zero sum game. So if someone's not paying it, someone else is picking up the slack because the levy still has to be charged. So when do you think they'll deal with this? It's been going on for quite a while. Oh, us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can maybe. I, I'll say maybe 2023, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I, I think it. I think this could be resolved a little sooner than that. I think we're mm -hmm. the talks are going along well, uh, Mark, and I think you were even involved went back to the county when this was going on. Yeah, a long time. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I, I think there. The nice thing about this is we we've, we've created a lot of factual stuff. So it, what the problem was, Impact kind of threw up their hands because the industry said this is how you should evaluate the property. Impact said. At one time, this is the way. And when they fought it, they just kind of backed off and just went with the industry. We didn't like the industry that, so we went back and, and went back to impact. So technically, we're fighting with impact to say to impact, reevaluate this properly. But at the same time, we've been working with the industry as well through TAPO and so to okay. so try to come to common ground. So I hope that this we're getting closer yeah. to that. Long so I'm hoping yeah. sooner than later. But again, it really affects the overall county tax base for sure. Yeah. yeah, long overdue. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? So the recommendation is that the Council of Town of Minter receives the aggregate resource property valuation and advocacy update report be received for information and that the aggregate resource property valuation and advocacy resolution schedule A of the report be supported by the Town of Minto. Sorry, Annaline, can you tell me if we have movers and seconders? Sorry, uh, yes, we do. It would be moved by Councillor Dirksen and seconded by Councillor Gunson. All in favor of this motion? Against? That's carried. Thank you. So the treasurer, uh, Treasurer Duff, uh, can you talk about the budget process? Uh, sure. Yeah, and and as we all know, it's uh, a challenging time for governments, business, and everyone right now. Um, so we're looking at our timelines for our 2021 budget, and we're trying to advance them, um, both on the operating and the capital side. Um, as we talked earlier in the meeting, Minto's a really growing area, and we have several projects that we want to get underway, and we want to get formal approval. Uh, and also uh, try and engage the public too. So uh, I know we had set uh, public meetings for our capital and operating budgets previously, but if our goal is to pass the budget before the end of calendar 2021, we're thinking of adding a couple more uh, budget presentations all in this fall. So um, we've currently got the department heads uh, led by Deputy Treasurer Mark Potter working on the budget. Uh, we're also very busy with our water wastewater financial plan. So we have been working away for these past several months on the 21 budget, still keeping an eye on the effects on our 2020 budget, which so far uh, haven't been too bad from, from COVID related things. So um, on the second page, I've got a proposed outline of uh, additional public meetings, uh, having a public open house in person if possible, virtual if not, on December the 8th, with a view to passing the budget on the December 15th council meeting, so. Right, Thank so you, Treasurer Duff. Any questions for uh, Gord or thoughts on this? Mayor Bridge? Uh, just just a comment and, and thanks uh, Gord for this um, and uh, thank Mark for it as well. Um, I've always wanted to have a budget done way before we do it and uh, I'm glad that we're able to get going that way and uh, but it's a, it's it's a team effort. Um, the one thing over the years we've developed a pretty good team response into getting information into the Treasury Department to order the budget to get done and we've had to move that forward so the, the department heads have been very good about that. And I think that, I think we're going to get a really good solid budget going forward. And uh, 
um, and ahead of the game so that we know where we're at, especially uh, in, in today's time. So, and, and the reporting, I'm looking forward to see how the reports come out to make it easy for us to understand it and for the public to understand it because it'd be nice, it, uh, we're looking at whether we have a, uh, I kind of, you said about having the public come to our open house. Hmm. Uh, it's sort of like pre-virus uh, because we've never had anybody show up to the open house hardly anyways, but, but maybe we will this time or have somebody, at least we can do it on the line if we can't do it open. But, yes, it was um, probably a pretty safe gathering in the past too. Yeah, 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 we didn't have a lot of people. We wouldn't have had to hold people back. Uh, but we're certainly, I think, getting it out to the public and having them see it is very important. And uh, I like the timing. So I hope we can get, get this done. Other questions? Councillor Allian. Okay. Uh, the recommendation is that the Council of Town of Minto receives the 2021 20, budget process and schedule report and further that the two additional meetings dated for November be added to the 2020 meeting schedule for budget deliberations. Annalene, help. Yes, certainly. Uh, moved by Mayor Bridge and seconded by Councillor McKenzie. All in favor of this motion? Against? That's carried. Thank you very much and I'll pass the chair back to our Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Gord. Thanks, David. And I guess right now we have uh, we have just other businesses disclosed. Um, and then we'll have to, if we manage to drag that out to five o'clock, we'll start in with the public meetings. If not, uh, uh, we'll, we'll have a bit of a break. So uh, I had, I think I had Judy for sure. And do you want to start, Judy? Sure, I can do that. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you to the public works staff for getting the uh, banners up in Harrison and in Clifford uh, the, the, uh, for the veterans. Um, there were 70 uh, placed in Harrison this year and 27 in Clifford. And I understand that they started at 4 a.m. a couple of days to avoid traffic issues. So uh, just wanted to uh, do a little shout out to uh, Mike and his crew for getting those up. Thanks, Judy. Yes, I, I add to that that uh, it was good. And I don't think we always were going to do it, but I guess the communication got a little off, so that's fine. Uh, it works out. It's nice to have it open up for the Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah. Anybody else? Oh, I have uh, Mark. Sorry, Mark. Yeah. Uh, it was the same subject as Judy just oh. talked about. Thanks, Mike and staff, for addressing that. Great. Yeah. And who else have I got there? David. I had the same thought. Same one. No, shoot. I know that there were some issues and I, cooler heads prevailed and that's the way we do it in Minto. We uh, get together and get things done no matter who you're working with. So thank you, Mike and, and Gary. Yeah, and, and just to add that, I think it was just a communication thing not that was ever not planned, I mm -hmm. do believe, but uh, it, was, it was good that it was reacted on really quick. Okay. Nobody else? So, Anlene, what do you want to do? Do you want to, uh, we've, we can't start till five. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. Uh, what we'll do is we will stop the recording of this meeting at this time. Um, you can shut off your microphones and shut off your videos and come back on just before 5 p.m. where we will start the public meeting. Again, people are still allowed to be on this site to look. So I would ask you to shut off your videos and shut off your mics and Great. then come back on just before 5 p.m. Thanks everybody, we're back and now it's five o'clock so we're going to get into our public uh, meetings and we have two today. So uh, the first one is on ZBA 2020-05-9563 O'Dwyer's Road, Menzies. The public meeting is to consider the amendment to the Town of Minto zoning bylaw number 0186 for the property located on concession 13 part lot uh, six with the municipal addresses of 9563 O'Dwyer's Road in the Town of Minto. I will act as the chair of the public meeting. I'll call the meeting to order. I request any member of the public present. I guess we they, they sign in to sign the record book. I guess you keep the record book for us there, Adeline. Uh Yes, I have recorded who is asked okay. to come on. Okay. Thank you. I'll ask, uh, it states the following, if a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the town of Mendel before the bylaws pass, the persons or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the town of Mendel to the local planning appeal tribunal and the person or public body may not be added 
as a party to the hearing of the appeal before the tribunal unless, in the opinion of the board, the reasonable grounds to do so. Acting clerk, not acting clerk, you must have to update this. Clerk, uh, McRobb, to state the permissible address and legal descriptions of the property, the purpose and effect of the application the date notice was sent. Uh, thank you, Mayor Bridge. Uh, the property subject to the proposed amendment is located on concession 13, part lot six, with a municipal address of 9563 O'Dwyer's Road in the town of Minto. The purpose and effect of the proposed amendment is to rezone the subject land to permit a dog kennel within a new 1,000 square foot accessory structure. The lands are currently zoned agriculture and natural environment and are occupied by a single family dwelling, a barn and accessory structures. Additional relief may be considered at this meeting. The notices were mailed to the property owners within 400 feet or 120 meters of the subject property, as well as the applicable agencies on September 16, 2020, and posted on the subject property. The following comments were received from Michelle Insante, Senior Planner of the County of Wellington, the Town of Minto staff, Maitland Valley Conservation Authority, and we also received correspondence from Bob Bernard and Gabby Goldschmidt received on October 5th and provided to council and staff. Correspondence from Brenda Eckert and Judy Schramming received at the town of Minto on October 5th and provided to council and staff. And council from Paul and Faye Plesch received at the town of Minto on October 6th and provided to council and staff. Thank you, Annalene. And uh, now I'll call on the applicant or their agent to provide comments regarding the proposed amendment. Conference zone, the, uh, Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw Number 0186. Are the applicants with us, uh, Matt? They are. May just take them a moment to get online. Okay. Mayor, Mayor Bridge. Yes. It's Stephen Menzies here, sir. With Steve. Oh, there you are. There. Good. Thanks, Nina. Thank you. Okay. Did you want to say anything on your on your application at this point, or did you want to wait? And well, this is the first meter, and uh, I'm not exactly sure either the procedure for well, what you might it, want from me, or now it's online here like this. It's a little nerve wracking. Uh, no so problem. I'm, I'm in your hands. Okay. Well, maybe what I'll suggest, and sometimes I do this, is go through the reports and everything and there's questions maybe from the council or from anybody else. Uh, I don't believe we have anybody else on the call, do we? Uh, through you, Mayor Bridge, no one else registered to come out on the uh, public meeting. But we do have three letters. So if there's any yeah. questions come up, then if you can, if you can answer them, Steve, if other, after we do the reports, if you want to hang in there for that. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So then I will call on the county planner. Is the county planner here or eh, there she is, Michelle. Okay, go ahead, Michelle. Thank you, Mayor Bridge uh, and members of council. We have reviewed the proposed breeding kennel um, application under the official plan policies, and we generally find no concerns with the application as indicated in the report. Um, I just maybe draw your attention to figure two of the staff report, which illustrates uh, those 150 meter setbacks from neighboring residences and livestock facilities, as well as um, an additional uh, measure maybe that we don't typically see or always see, but it's a 30 meter buffer as per the growth plan um, to the abutting uh, provincially significant wetland. The proposed location of the kennel building does appear to be able to meet the setback requirements of the kennel bylaw. And just as of note too, it also meets the minimum lot size requirements, which is uh, 10 acres and the applicant, um, the, the proper subject lands have 12.3 acres. As such, we have forwarded an amending bylaw to permit a kennel as per the kennel licensing bylaw on the subject lands. Should the zoning be approved, um, the applicant will be required to submit a detailed site plan as part of the kennel license application. Happy to take any questions. Good. Okay, any questions for Michelle, from our, the councillor or from the applicant? Council? No question. Okay. I don't see any from the council at this time. Okay, Michelle, just hang, hang close and we keep going forward. Uh, the, our, Terry, did you want to add anything to uh, to your comments? Um, the only thing I just would like to know, and I apologize, I'm having video issues here. You, uh, the site plan when it's submitted uh, to determine whether or not it's within their regulated area. Um, so that's just kind of 
Yeah, we lost you, Terry. Oh, I apologize. Um, so the um, only thing I would like to note is that Saugeen Valley, um, in their report, uh, they would like to see a site plan uh, prior to the issuance of a building permit. Um, just with regards to the location of the kennel and Saugeen Valley's regulated area. Right. Okay. And you'll have you'll have to do that when you do the site plan with with uh, with the applicant, right? For sure. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for the uh, for yes, Deputy Mayor Turton. Yeah. So Michelle is is a thousand uh, square foot for a kennel, uh, a fair size, like a thousand a thousand square feet. And maybe I should be asking uh, Steve. <clears throat> uh, through, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, I mean, I think it's not an unusual size for a kennel, um, but I would maybe defer you to uh, the applicant and, and maybe he can describe and explain what the building itself might look like. And um, I know they are looking at, um, in the application, they had talked about eight dogs. So um, it might not be typically what we have seen, I guess, in more recent um, meetings. So it seems to might, maybe a, a, an explanation from the applicant might help. Steve, can you answer that a little bit? Uh, what your what your plans for the building is? Well, I will do my best, Mayor. Uh, first of all, that number is not a fixed number. Uh, in that, this is a learning curve for me and Marina. And the bottom line is, the goal will be to do an outstanding can kennel in every respect for the animals and for whatever the highest standard is is what we will be doing here. Um, I, I honestly can't say whether that is the, the right size or not. It's just a number that we came up with in our best estimate as we have a learning curve here, but we will make sure that uh, when we apply for the necessary permits and whatnot, that the facility will be first class in every way. That may be a little generic, but uh, sure. uh, I can't stand sit here and talk to you as an expert and say there's a precise reason in my mind why we picked that number. We did our best to come up with a number we thought would be a fair size, but we will amend it if necessary. I, so, uh, a couple of, what do we have? Three letters, and I mean, all three of them, I think, have a, a serious issue with with dogs barking. And I understand that the MDS is is good in in all five of your uh, neighbors. But um, why do people think that all kennels are are loud? Why do they think that dogs are always barking at kennels? Why is that? Can I make a quick comment, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor? Mm -hmm. sure. yeah, go ahead. It's interesting. I wasn't aware until this moment that there'd been the objections and I'm, I'm kind of disappointed to say that, that there are. The neighbors in question all have dogs and I, <laughs> I don't want to cause a dispute within my own community, but all their dogs are barkers. The dogs that we uh, will be raising are called uh, Swiss Bernese mountain dogs. They're very quiet uh, animals. Uh, they literally just don't bark. So, uh, yep. you know, any dog will bark on occasion if they're spooked or something, but uh, they they are remarkably genteel and, and quiet dogs. And I, I really uh, find it uh, hard to understand why these particular neighbors, as who I said, have dogs that are barkers would, would, would find that to be an issue. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Councilor McKenzie? Uh, but through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, if, if the rezoning passes, the, the kennel is eligible to up to 25 dogs, right? Right. Am I correct or not? I believe that's the way the bylaw reads. <laughs> yeah, there's no limit on the up. No. Eight. Just the limits on 25. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. And just for your information, we will not be going to that kind of a number. Our plan is to be a small operation one male dog two female dogs and and that will be the, uh, the the size we intend to maintain there may be slight amendments up or down but it'll never get close to the number of 25 that would be permitted right. any other questions okay um I just just want to point out uh, the the Burmese mountain dogs are large and they're they're 
they are quiet. I've, I've known a few of them over my years, and uh, they are quiet. My dogs a lot more than theirs did. Uh, Thank you, Mayor. I have a great picture if you want to see them. Oh, I, I, I know what they look like. Yeah. They're beautiful. The one, the male is named Timbit. I yep. should get marks for getting a good Canadian name like that, Timbit. And the female's named Lollipop. Oh, there you go. Great names. Thank you. Yep. Anyways, uh, I think I'm here. At, everybody's had a chance to discuss it, right? Annalene, we're good. So I will at this time state uh, that if you wish to be notified of a decision of council of the town of Minto in respect to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment application, you must make a written request to the acting clerk of the town of Minto at 5941 Highway 89, Harrison NOG 100, or by email annaline at town.minto.on.ca. There's no further comments. I will adjourn the public meeting. You can't hear my little rap there. Anyways, thank you all. Thanks, uh, Mr. Andes, and for coming and go from there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Up next. Oh. Okay, up next is our minor variance MV 202004 Bernhardt 9847 Creek Road. I will call this meeting to order and publicly state any decisions reached by this committee today cannot be used to set a precedent. Each application considered by the committee is dealt in its own merits and no after right. Through you, Mayor Bridge. I, yeah. I hate to I apologize. We do need a resolution moving council and committee of adjustment first before we go into the minor uh, variance. Oh, that was okay. Sorry. We better do that then. Is that on my sheets here? Uh, yes, uh, sir. Oh, for, oh, for this be. one, you mean, not for the last one, for this one. That's right, for this one here, uh, it. because it is a committee of adjustment. Yeah, I did. I turned the page too quick. Um, moved by Councillor Dunson, second by Councillor Dirksen, the town of Minto approves the application. No. Uh, no, sorry, where is it here? No, that's when we have to get to the end of it. Mayor Bridget, if you wish, I can read it for you. Well, I got it here now. Thank is, this, you. is this the one? Uh, Top of page 12. Oh, yeah, here it is. Yeah. Moved by Councillor Elliott, second by Councillor Gutson, that the Town of Mendo of Council convenes a committee of adjustment. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Got it. All right. And now we go into this one, right? We just did the one. That's correct. Is this the Bernard one now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you want me to say it all over again, the first part? That, no, if you, you finish that, sir, that's fine. Public hearings to consider a minor variance application file number MV 2004, Brandon Barnhart and Paula Sire. Uh, I'll call the Secretary Treasurer to state the following. Secretary Treasurer Rob. Uh, thank you, Mayor Bridge. The subject property is legally described as concession 18, part lot 35, RP 60R1192, part one, municipally known as 9847 Creek Road, town of Minto. The subject land is approximately 4.04 hectare or 10 acres in size. The purpose and effect of the application is to permit the construction of a 783.4 meters squared personal riding area accessory structure with a combined accessory structure floor of 992.9 meters squares or 10,687 square feet, whereas section 6.1.4B of the Corporation of the Town of Mento's Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw 01-86 as amended, permits a maximum combined floor area accessory structure of 464.5 meters squares or 5,000 square feet. Notices were mailed to the property owners within 200 feet or 60 meters of the subject property as well as the applicable agencies on September 16, 2020, posted on the subject property and circulated to staff on the same date, and the following comments were received. Tonamento Chief Building Official, Staff Report, County of Wellington Planner Report, and the Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority Environmental Planning Technician Report. Okay, thank you, Annalene. Um, I'll call on the applicant or agent for any comments. Is there anybody on here? Hearing none, I'll call on the Town of Minto Chief Building Official Staff Report. 
All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the subject property, as mentioned, is located at 9847 Creek Road. Um, it is zoned agricultural as well as natural environment and is approximately 9.88 acres in size. Uh, the property contains a single family detached dwelling, a hobby barn and some outbuildings. Um, as mentioned, the owner proposes to construct an 8,432 square foot uh, tarp, structure, uh, tarp <coughs> structure style riding arena um, strictly for personal use. Um, a riding arena is classed as an accessory structure and due to the size of the property and the existing accessory structures, the total area exceeds the maximum permitted size of accessory structures, uh, which would be 5,000 square feet. A notice was mailed to the adjacent property owners and posted on the site on September 16th. Uh, due to the revised format of this meeting, a revised notice was mailed to the adjacent property owners on September 23rd and reposted on the site as well. Um, town staff were circulated the application and no concerns uh, were raised. Um, the only thing we received was a report from the Wellington County Planning Department as well as Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority. Um, I have nothing further to add except for the recommendation that's in my report. Great. Thanks, Terry. Um, any questions from the councillors? Okay. And uh, Michelle, did you want to make any comments? You're on mute yet. But there you go. Thank you, Mayor Ridge. I, I don't really need to add anything. Uh, further, if there was any questions about the planning comments, I'd be happy to answer any of those. Um, we were in support of the proposed minor variance to permit the riding arena. Great. Thanks, Michelle. Any questions for Michelle? Okay. Uh, for you, Mayor Bridge, um, the applicant is online, I see. Brandon oh, oh. Bernhardt. Well, Brandon, we've gone through most of it. Did you want to make a comment or? You no, know, I just uh, this this is kind of new to me, folks. Uh, I'm just listening away here. I, I unless I'm asked to any particular questions, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's just a personal riding arena for the horses here. So, oh, that's great. They need exercise. That's for sure. Right. In the winter time, we don't have great weather in the winter to do it. So that's, that's the weather's great. been very, very bad lately. That's one reason why we decided to try this because it's just getting very awkward to train young horses. So, gotcha. Thank you. Okay, um, I don't, right now, I don't think there's any questions for the applicant, is there? Or, okay, good. Um, so the Secretary of Treasury provides a resolution for the committee to consider upon the resolution being carried or defeated, the notice of decision of the committee adjustments to be signed by all members of the committee of adjustments in favor of the decision. Annalene, uh, did you want? Mayor Bridge, uh, I'm, I will take a guess that perhaps you wish to uh, look at the approve the application. I, I With think your questions, would you like me to read that out? If you could. Thank you. The Town of Minto approves the application by Brandon Bernhardt for property legally described as Concession 8, Part Lot 35, RP 60R1192, Part 1, municipally known as 9847 Creek Road, in the Town of Minto to permit the construction of a 783.4 meter square, 8,432 square foot. Uh, personal riding arena accessory structure with a combined accessory structure floor area of 992.9 meters square or 10,687 square foot, whereas section 6.1.4b of the Corporation of the Town of Mentos Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw 0186 as a minute permits a maximum combined floor area for accessory structures of 464.5 meters squares or 5,000 square feet. Okay. I believe it may be a mover and a seconder already chosen. Deputy Mayor Turton and Councillor Gunson. All in favor? Mark, I can't see your hand. Are you a favor? Favor? Okay, thank you. Anybody opposed? Okay, thank you. Passed. Now I have to finish it off, don't I? Yes. So that's number nine. Uh, just you need to state about anyone wishing to receive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will state anyone wishing to receive a copy of the notice of decision must make a written request to the clerk of the town of Minto at 5941 Highway 89, Harrison, NOG 100, or by email at annaline at town.minto.on.ca. Officially adjourn the public meeting. Thanks, everybody. All right. Resolution uh, moved by Councillor McKenzie and seconded by Deputy Mayor Turton that the Committee of Adjustment convenes the regular council. All in favor? Good. 
Uh, notice a motion. Seeing none, go into the bylaws. 2020 46 final bylaw reading for Shannon Municipal Drain and Municipal Drains 30 and 52 2020. Moved by Deputy Mayor Turton, second by Councillor Elliott, the bylaw number 2020 46 to previously adopt the report prepared by Dietrich Engineering Limited dated June 22nd, 2020 under section 78 of the Drainage Act, Shannon Municipal Drain and Municipal Drains number 30, 52, 2020. Be read the third time in past Nova Council and Seal Civic Corporation. All in favor? Opposed? Seeing none. Passed. Moved by Council Dirksen, second by Council Gunson that the bylaw number 202066 to execute a rental agreement between the Corporation of the Town of Minto and North Wellington Healthcare be introduced read first, second, and third time and pass an open council to seal the seal of the corporation. All in favor? Passed. Moved by Deputy Mayor Turton, second by Council McKenzie, bylaw number 202067 being the bylaw to provide for the approval of the municipal energy, municipal emergency response plan be introduced read for a second and third time past Nova Council Seal Seal Corporation. All in favor? Passed. Moved by Councillor Elliott, second by Councillor McKenzie. The bylaw number 202068 to appoint David Wilson as Deputy Chief Building Official and Bylaw Enforcement Officer in the Town of Mid will be introduced first read the first, second, and third time passed on with Council Seal to Seal Corporation. All in favor? Passed. Moved by Councilor Gutson, second by Councilor Dirksen, that the bylaw number 202069 to amend the zoning bylaw 0186 as amended regarding 9563 O'Dwyer's Road, Minto be introduced, read first, second, and third time passed on with Council Seal to Seal the Corporation. All in favor? Opposed? Wait, Mark. Okay. Uh, passed. Moved by Councillor McKenzie, second by Deputy Mayor Turton, the bylaw number 202069 to confirm the actions of the Council of the Corporation of Town of Mint will be introduced, read first, second, and third time, passed by Council and seal the seal of the corporation. All in favor? Passed. Moved by Councillor Dirksen, second by Councillor Elliott. The Council of Town of Mint adjourns to meet again at the call of the mayor. All in favor? Passed. Thank you, everybody. Good meeting. I think we got through that. Bye, everybody.